Hi, this is Steve with iFlow. In this segment, we're going to look at what an air handler is and what it does. But first, let's look at the three components or the, the individual components and the functions of HVAC equipment. So first, we're going to look at a gas furnace. A gas furnace has three basic uh, components, uh, component functions. We have the gas valve in that, that assembly, we have the heat exchanger assembly, and then we have the blower. The gas valve, or sorry, the, the combustion side includes the gas valve, the venturi, the blower, and the burner. And this is what takes the source energy, the natural gas or, or propane, and converts it to heat. Then we have the heat exchangers, and uh, in a condensing unit we have the secondary heat exchanger and then the primary. So these heat exchangers, they transfer the heat that was made on the combustion side in the, from the burner and they convert that to the air. So as the air passes across it transfers. And then the third function is the blower and then the blower distributes that heated air through the home. So we have the conversion of the gas to heat, transfer of that heat to the air and then distribution of that air through the home. So those are the three functions uh, of the components in the furnace. On the air conditioning side, very similar, we have the compressor that creates all of the cooling. So we have the compressor, we have the the reversing valves and the expansion valves, we have the refrigerant and then the compressor fan. Those work together to create the, the cooling. And then we have the outdoor unit or the condenser unit and then we have the indoor unit or the evaporator coil. Um, these do the transfer, so these are the heat transfer or the heat exchangers. And then again, similar to the heat, the furnace side, we have a fan for the distribution. So create the cooling, we transfer the cooling and then we distribute the cooling through the home uh, using the blower. So this blower would be in the air handler or in a, in a furnace. So just to summarize the three functions of any uh, HVAC equipment, number one is to convert the energy source, so whether that's natural gas, propane, electricity, that's transferred into uh, heating or cooling. Second is to transfer that heating or cooling via some heat exchanger into the airstream. And then once it's into the airstream, we then need to blow and distribute that air, that heated or cooled air or the conditioned air throughout the home, where and when and in the amounts needed. And that's the job of the, of the blower. Eye flow, so when we're talking about air, air handlers and then eye flow, we focus on functions two and three. So we maximize the efficiency of the heat transfer when it's in heating mode, and then we precisely distribute that heated air and cooled air throughout the home with our modulation and with our zoning. So let's go back to our initial question. What is an air, air handler and what does it do? So an air handler is an indoor component of your HVA system, HVAC system that moves the cooled or heated air throughout the ductwork of your home. So we have a cross section of a home here and we can see that we have, let's say, an iFlow unit in the, in the basement and we have the ducting, the ducting going to basement, to the main floor and then to the upper floor. Uh, so all the distribution will be buried in the wall cavities of your home. Uh, but we push up through, push the heating and cooling through this ducting. It goes into each of the rooms and then you have a return that will bring that air back to the uh, back to the air handler and we heat it or cool it and then send it around again. So in summer we take the air that's in your home and it'll warm up with the, with the, with the heat of the sun in the summer. We bring it through, pass it across the, the coolant, uh, the evaporator coil and send that conditioned cooled air into the home. So we just do this circuit in the summer and in the winter we do the opposite. We bring the warm air, or the cold air uh, into the unit, we run it across our heating coil, our hydronic coil, it'll heat up and then we deliver the warm air into your home and we'll do that circuit. So this is kind of what we do in a simplified version and this is kind of a cross section of the ducting that would be typical in a home. 
So now let's look at the differences between a furnace and an air handler. So this is an installation that has a tankless water heater. Now this could be a tank type water heater as well. Um, so we have a water heater here on this side and then we have a furnace. In this case we're looking at two gas appliances. So we have two exhausts. We have an exhaust and an intake on the furnace and then we have an exhaust and an intake on the water heater. Uh, we have a gas line that's coming in and doing uh, a gas to uh, gas to both appliances. So this is uh, the installation of, of a furnace and then let's compare that to an air handler. So an air handler, because we're using, we're letting, we, we don't do that, um, that, um, that first function, the conversion of the, the gas and the propane or the electricity into the heat and cool. We don't do that function. We allow our other partners, the other manufacturers to specialize in that area and then we take the hot water that they create and then we bring it into our hydronic coil uh, and we use that and then distribute it efficiently through the home. So we do the transfer to the air and the distribution through the air but we don't do the creation of it. But because we don't do that we don't have a gas valve so we don't need a, a gas line and we don't have any combustion products so we don't need an exhaust vent. So really we only in this in a combi situation you only need one exhaust line if you're using a gas appliance uh, only one gas line only one exhaust line um, to in that combined system. Be, but we don't have the second gas line, we don't have the second vent, but we do need a pump and we do need some plumbing to bring the hot water from the from the water heater over to the hydronic coil. So just to to look at those differences back and forth type of thing. So we have the venting with the gas with the gas furnace, no venting with the hydronic coil, but we need the pump instead. So just some of the differences. So to look at how it's working, so inside the unit we have a blower and that blower will push air up across the heating coil. If we have air conditioning then we're going to have an A-coil on top of, of, uh, of our unit and then we distribute that through the home whether it's a single zone or whether it's broken into zone 1, zone 2, zone 3 as we have in this, in this diagram. Whatever the case may be, we can, we can deal with that. So, uh, we're looking at this installation. Sorry about that. We're looking at this installation on the right. We have, this is in heating mode. So we're bringing the cold air that's in the home, running it across the heating coil, across this heating coil. And the blower, the blower is right in here. And so the blower is sucking it in, blowing it up across the heating coil. That return, that colder return air is heating up and we're supplying it out to the out to the home. And in this case we're using this wall hung boiler to supply the heat, the uh, hot water to the hydronic coil. In cooling mode what we're going to do is we're going to add an evaporator coil. On the outside we'll have an outdoor unit. The condenser unit with the compressor will be outside. It'll run its line set into the evaporator coil and we'll do our air conditioning. All of our cooling transfer will be done here. In this case the blower is going to blow the air. There will be no heat in the heating coil because we're in cooling mode. The blower is going to blow the air across the cooling coil and then again we distribute it just the same way we do on the heating side. So in cooling mode we're going to take the warm return air from, you, from the home and we're going to run it across the cooling coil and supply that chilled air or the conditioned air out through, your, out through the home, out through the distribution system, the ducting system to the various parts of your home. So to summarize what we do at iFlow, we do the water to air heat transfer. So we manage that using our, our pump control, our blower and our pump control. And then we distribute that uh, through the home in the best way possible using the CFM rate and the modulation of the CFM rate. We use a damper control if we're using zoning and then our multiple thermostats if we're using zoning as well to distribute that most efficiently, most effectively to the various parts of your home. So, 
the ability to decouple those three functions. As we looked at the transfer, and then the, so we look at the conversion of, of gas to heat, the transfer of, of heat to the air, and then the distribution of the air throughout the home. The ability to decouple those three functions allows, uh, allows the industry, the HVAC industry, the flexibility to build custom solutions on an application by application basis. So our partners, so the iFlow partners, whether it's HVAC designers, whether it's our wholesalers, whether it's our contractors, builders, uh, and even homeowners, you can now select and install the best equipment that converts the heat energy uh, over to, or converts the, the source energy, gas or electricity, over to heat and cool. And then um, we can distribute that through the home in the most efficient way. So pairing that with the iFlow gives you an optimal combination solution. So we're picking the best heat source that does that number one function, and then we're pairing it with the iFlow to create an optimal pairing, an optimal combination solution that meets the specific demand and the constraints of, uh, of the home on an application by application basis. As I mentioned um, when we looked at the zoning, if I have a home that needs 7,000 BTUs or 8,000 BTUs in a particular zone, I'm going to choose, let's say, a boiler that has a uh, minimum input of 7,000 BTUs, for example, and so that when that zone calls, my boiler won't be, won't be cycling. It's going to be able to deliver at maximum, but also at minimum. So it's, that, it's the right sizing of the system. It's sizing the heating appliance to match the, not only the maximum heat load in your house, but the minimum heat load of the smallest zone so that we're, max, we're, we're, we're not cycling the unit, we're allowing it to work at its maximum efficiency. And this is how we deliver that superior performance and unparalleled comfort. So a question we do get is, hey, are these combi systems new? Nobody wants to be a guinea pig. Uh, nobody wants to be the first in the market, but uh, do the major HVAC manufacturers sell these units and why aren't they doing combi systems? Um, is this separation of functions, that one, two, and three different functions, is this new? And the answer is no. It's done every day uh, by all HVAC manufacturers. All, all manufacturers have air handlers. Uh, in fact, Lennox owns ADP, which is one of the larger uh, air, air handler manufacturers in, in uh, North America. Um, they do it every day and let me show you how. So here we've got a Lennox furnace for example and we're going to be we're going to look at this furnace in air conditioning mode. So we're looking at how the furnace works uh, or what the furnace is doing in the summer. So we've got an outdoor unit and we've got a, an evaporator coil. So this is doing the cooling. Right? This is doing the conversion. This is the heat transfer. Uh, so then the, the blower so in this application, all this furnace is doing is running its blower. That's the only thing. We're not using the gas valve. We're not using the heat exchangers. We're just using the blower to blow the air because the outdoor unit and the evaporator coil are doing the cooling in this application. So this is really, uh, we're just using the blower for the air, di air distribution through the home. So really this is just like an air handler. Really this furnace is operating only as an air handler in that we're not using these two components of the system. And this is accepted by the industry and installed every day in North America. Every day, everywhere, all across North America, we're installing a furnace uh, with an AC system, knowing full well that in the, you know, in the southern parts of the US, for example, that the furnace is not going to be used very much but it's there doing all of the distribution. We're using its blower to distribute the air through the home, but most of the time it's going to be in cooling mode. And now with heat pump water heaters, if we use an inverter heat pump, now it will be doing cooling and some of the heating, minimizing the use of, of the furnace, but still using the blower. So if we use an iFlow in that application, then same outdoor unit, same performance, except we're using our blower 
We're using our blower with the zone control, with our app, with the full modulation capability of 0 to 100%. We're adding a lot more benefit to the distribution side because we're able to focus on that. Instead of being having to focus on all three of those functions, we're able to focus on the transfer and the distribution to be able to solve those HVAC problems. So that's an air handler. This is an air handler combi, but exact same as that furnace would be doing in the previous uh, slide we looked at. So our point is this should be accepted by the industry every day, given that you're doing Given that you're doing this every day, installing it every day, this is no different in that application. So, if an air handler combi system can be accepted and installed every day on the cooling side, then why should it be different? Why should it be any different on the heating side? And really, it shouldn't. You know, when we look at this application and we we use uh, in this case an inverter heat pump, for example, to do the cooling and then let's say do the heating in the shoulder season, perfect application uh, where we're, we're able to, again because we're decoupling the, the different functions, we're able to select the best compressor, the best condenser, the best evaporator coil, we're able to pair that system together and then we know that we can deliver in whatever CFM, uh, whatever, uh, however in the home that, uh, that the homeowner needs uh, and dis uh, distribute it uh, most efficiently and effectively. And if we can do that on the AC side, then why can't we do the same on the heating side? Why can't we pick the best appliance there is in the market to convert that heat, uh, the energy, into heat and then use it with the iFlow? And the answer is we can. And as I said, we have to look at are there any alternative heat sources that may work better in certain applications, especially low low load applications than a furnace. Right? If your furnace, uh, many of the furnaces in the market cannot modulate any lower than 25, 24, 23,000 BTUs. In many of the heat losses we're seeing now in the industry, especially in new construction, as the window technology gets better, as the doors, uh, the insulation gets better, the exterior wrap gets better, so less leakage, heat loads are going way down. Um, and uh, we're seeing, you know, a, a townhouse application, for example, can have a, a heat load of 15,000 BTUs. But if the minimum input on my furnace is only is 23 or 25,000 BTUs, it's going to be cycling when it tries to heat that, that small townhouse application at 15,000 BTUs. And this is what we're trying to avoid. If we can pair it with a boiler that has a turndown ratio of 10 to 1 and can do... 7,000 BTUs, for example, that would be a perfect application for that 15,000 BTU townhouse. So, um, we think we can do it better, we, can, we think we can do it more efficiently, um, and that's why we're advocating this, this, uh, this system on the heating side, um, just like we do on the air conditioning, and we have done for, for many years. So it's not any different, and yes, we can do it, and we can actually do it the best in the industry. So again, thank you for your time. We appreciate uh, the time you've spent with us. Uh, if you have any questions or feedback, uh, we'd, be, we'd be pleased to, to hear it. Um, iflowhvac.com if you want the website. Alternatively, please send me an email at steve.bagshaw at iflowhvac.com. My toll-free number and my cell phone are there should you wish to reach out. So again, thank you for your time. We hope it's been helpful. Um, thank you for considering iFlow.